Now the due diligence fee is paid directly to the seller, like I said, and it's immediately non-refundable. So whenever you're deciding how much money to put up in your due diligence fee, you need to decide what you're comfortable walking away from if the property turns out to not be what you wanted. Hey everybody, I'm Tiffany Weber and I am a real estate lawyer in Mooresville, North Carolina. And today we're going to talk about the difference in the due diligence fee and the earnest money deposit. So this whole video assumes that we're talking about the North Carolina standard offer to purchase. And that's important because I know a lot of other states do not have the concept of the due diligence fee. They may have the due diligence period, but there's no money associated with it. So in North Carolina, the due diligence fee is paid directly to the seller after the contract execution. And it's essentially you buying the time to check out the property and compensating the owner of the property for taking the property off of the market so that you exclusively have the right to check it out. So that's kind of tied to a due diligence period. Now the due diligence fee is paid directly to the seller, like I said, and it's immediately non-refundable. You're not getting that money back. So whenever you're deciding how much money to put up in your due diligence fee, you need to decide what you're comfortable walking away from if the property turns out to not be what you wanted. So the due diligence period will end at some point before the closing. So that's where the earnest money deposit comes in. The earnest money deposit is also paid at the time of contract execution, except rather than being paid to the seller, it's paid to the escrow agent. So in North Carolina, that's usually the closing attorney. So the money will be remitted to the closing attorney's office and held in escrow until the time of the closing. Now the earnest money deposit is kind of your show of good faith that you intend to move forward with the closing. And the earnest money deposit is refundable up to a certain point, and that point is the end of the due diligence period. Provided that you terminate the contract within the due diligence period before it expires, then your earnest money deposit is refundable. But if you terminate after due diligence expires, then the earnest money is non-refundable, it gets paid to the seller. So it's very important that you know the timing of these and what deposit means what, what's refundable, what isn't, so that whenever you are trying to decide whether or not you are going to terminate a contract on a property, you know what you can get back and what you can't. Both of these deposits, so due diligence fee and earnest money deposit, are applied towards the purchase price at closing. And of course, these terms can be altered. They have to be in a writing signed by the parties. In North Carolina, that means by an addendum that has to be drafted by an attorney. So if you don't like the way the standard offer to purchase sets these things forth, then if the parties can come to an agreement, then an attorney can draft an addendum to alter that to your specifications. But if you are not altering that standard offer to purchase, this is how it's going to work in North Carolina. All right, I hope that explains the difference in the due diligence fee and the earnest money deposit. If you want to know more about how North Carolina real estate law works, then make sure you go check out the other videos on my channel.